you don't have a toothbrush, if you don't have soap, if you don't have a blanket, it's not safe and sanitary. Well, wouldn't everybody agree to that? But you're really going to stand up and tell us that, that being able to sleep isn't a question of safe and sanitary conditions? Your Honor, I think what I'd like to what I'd like to stand up and say, really say is to focus <laughs> is to focus the court on um, uh, what what the question is. Any number of things might fall under those categories, and I think yes, I, but can... but sleep surely does, right? You can't be safe and 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 sanitary or safe as a human being if you can't sleep. Well, by now you've all probably seen this lawyer for the Trump administration argue that detained migrant children in U.S. custody don't need soap, toothbrushes, or blankets, and it's actually okay that their facilities do not meet the safe and sanitary standards required by a 1977 settlement, which for the record is apparently a standard that Somali pirates offered to Michael Scott Moore when he was held captive. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Those guys. The U.S. government is treating their prisoners with less dignity then Somali pirates, number one, baby. And if that's not enough for you, I'd like to remind everyone watching that your taxpayer dollars are funding these detention centers. We are paying private prisons upwards of $750 a day per child to not take care of these kids, even though not separating the migrant children from their parents in the first place would cost the government less. But you might be thinking, why are we being this brutal? Well, don't let anyone gaslight you. It's totally on purpose. Our Department of Homeland Security personnel going to separate the children from their moms and dads. Yes, I am considering, in order to deter uh, more movement along this terribly dangerous network, I am considering uh, exactly that. That's ex-chief of staff John Kelly admitting that this insanely cruel separation policy was conjured as a deterrent back when he was the Homeland Security Secretary. And these policies have had devastating consequences with thousands of children being denied the opportunity to reunite with their parents, with the youngest of the children separated being a four month old baby whose parents have already been deported, so he's now in foster care. But of course, our civil discourse lovers are still more concerned about calling these concentration camps what they are, concentration camps. One, concentration camps are not exclusive to the Holocaust. The US held Japanese Americans in concentration camps during during World War II, some of which we literally are planning to reuse, by the way. We had them in the past for the Bracero program to jail migrant workers. And the first known usage of the word comes from the British during the Boer Wars to concentrate a group of political prisoners or persecuted minorities in an area with inadequate facilities, which is why it's an appropriate term for an administration that's justifying brutal methods against migrants as a deterrence policy. Thus far, 24 people have died in ICE custody. All preventable deaths, according to an ICE memo, intercepted by our Ken Klippenstein. There are flu outbreaks in the child camps. People are being tortured with sleep deprivation, shoved into rooms that are way over capacity. There are thousands of reports of sexual assault, but this is totally different, right? These people broke the law, right? Except we all know what legal is, is subject to change. After all, being Jewish became illegal and harboring Jews was illegal. Escaping as a slave was illegal. What's legal is immaterial under these circumstances and what matters is doing what's right. If you are arguing semantics, instead of doing everything you can to free these innocent people locked away for no crime other than being born on the wrong side of the border, you are not a good person. You are no different than those who were indifferent while slavery happened while the Holocaust happened. I'm Hassan Piker, and I hope these words can change some of your minds. Please share this video with your friends. And this has been The Breakdown. Did you know that TYD Network is now available on YouTube's new streaming platform, YouTube TV? Get access to full TYT episodes and exclusive shows by signing up for YouTube TV today. All new subscribers get a seven day free trial. So head on over to youtube.tv and search for the TYT Network channel.